just before you, like when Set. you paused. Ah. Okay, here we go. Ready? Mm -hmm. Oh, what? Let me oh, cut it's it. going? Yeah, it's already going. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's been going for seven minutes. Seven minutes. All right. So we're doing this janky style on an iPhone because we had some few some free some time time away from children. But it's still another podcast. Welcome to <laughs> Have, Have I, I Ever, ever told, told You? you? A podcast about telling each other stories or just sharing experiences or telling other people's stories, passing them as if they were our own. That'd be funny. <laughs> that would be terrible. There was this one time whenever I was the 25th president of the United States. <laughs> That'd be funny. Have there been 23? I don't, even, I don't have to look that up. I don't know. I'm terrible. U.S. history is not... History in general is not my story. That's actually a good question. Like, what, what did you like in school? Oh, I liked geography a lot. Geography? Yeah. Um, and science was fun because I got to do experiments. I was really good at math. Um, and so I, I enjoyed math. Like in eighth grade, I was doing college algebra. So what? But I don't remember any of that because so I don't use it. What was you the... do not need it. You do not use it in normal life. We were just, we were FYI. just listening about this. <laughs> Uh, what was Unless your, you're an engineer. What was the least favorite? English. English, yep. And writing. I would agree. I and I'm still so bad at it. Oh, I have a story actually about English. But first, let's get introductions. My name is Trevor. I'm Megan. And together we are Mega Trev. We decided to make a podcast because we thought it would be fun. And it is. It is fun. And you can find it on SoundCloud, you can find it on iTunes, and you can find it on YouTube. I think we're just going to keep them on the Mega Trev channel for right now. But make sure, if you're on YouTube, to like and comment. Let us know. Give us some feedback. We'd love to hear what you have to say. And if you have any questions, we would love to answer them. You can reach me on Twitter at, at Megatrev and Megan at Mrs. Megatrev. We are also... No, you're Mr. Megatrev on Instagram. Right, I couldn't pull the Megatrev one. Someone else has it and they don't even use it. I've, like, messaged them a ton of times. Anyway. It's okay. Makes me mad that and, I don't have it. Um, I am Mrs. Megatrev on Instagram. So, quick story about school, about English. I, too, loved math. I was really good at it. Okay. I was the kid that never did his homework. But I would always get do really good on tests. But English, I was kind of bad at. But just because I didn't like studying for tests. And like I remember we had spelling tests in, in high school. And I don't know if I should tell this story. I used to cheat on my spelling tests. Who would you cheat off of? I didn't cheat off anybody. I would you take... Cheat? I knew what letters... I knew what words we were going to be having. And I wrote them on the tiniest piece of paper... And I kept it in my hand. You brat. And pretty much after, like, so I would keep it and I would just kind of fumble with my hands around and I would shuffle my hand and so I could see the piece of paper, saw the correct spelling, and then I would spell it and then turn it in. But I wouldn't always do it to where I'd get 100%. I would get, like, 85s and 90s so that I didn't seem suspicious. So I would purposely misspell a couple things. You're a terrible <laughs> student. Oh my gosh. But it was, it was good. I don't know. I was, I felt. I don't know. I you felt, felt bad. proud of yourself. That was also the class that, like, one of the first things we did in that class was watch Lord of the Rings, and I, I was not into the Lord of the Rings thing. I was like, oh, whatever. Who cares? But it does have a lot of character dynamics in it, and it's a really good story in the way it's told. And I remember. They had you watch it instead of read it. Yeah, I don't remember what the reasoning was. What? And I got transferred to that class. I don't remember what happened. That's weird. So they were in the middle. Maybe they had just started like a day before. It's like a three-hour movie. Yeah. But I remember watching that and she was showing us how, you know, protagonists and villains and all that stuff work. And I remember watching it and falling in love with it. I was like, this is amazing. Like, this is such a cool story. And then that's from then on out, I was like, I have to watch them all. So I did. I watched them all and I... I think the second one hadn't come out. No, the third one hadn't come out in theaters yet. So when the third one came out, I was like, oh, super pumped about watching it. It's really cool. Do you remember when Rory lived... This is completely random, but do you remember when Rory lived with us? Yes. And people that. 
ended up staying the night. Uh huh. And everybody stayed and had a like a Lord of the Rings marathon. And it was like the Lord of the Rings on TBS. Yeah. So that it was like twice as long because of commercials. We were like it was all dark. We all were on the on the couch, couch with blankets, the floor. right? Yeah. Just like sitting there, just was it winter out. time? I don't know. It may. It may have been. That was. That was a good a memory. Good, good day. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Us and all the boys, pretty much. Yeah. I One girl. So. I think Shada was there. Yeah, Shada. I wasn't naming names. I already named Rory. But whatever. <laughs> it's not its real name. <gasps> Ooh, mystery. <gasps> I forget now what we were gonna. Um, oh, so we were asked two questions mm -hmm. in the last podcast in that we did like well, a month ago. Yeah, in the last podcast we asked, um, what other stories would you guys like to hear, which we would like to know that again. After Do you remember one, who it was that said it? Who asked the question? Um, um Can Disco Vlogs mm. asked. Yeah, yeah. Um, how you decided to go into IT and be an assistant for a midwife. So asking about our careers and how we got into them. Thank you, sir. We've talked before on the Twitters and everything. <clears throat> I like your I have vlogs. A, I don't know who you are. I'll look you up. <laughs> I'm, a ter I'm terrible about They're that. They're a small family vlog. They, I don't think they daily vlog. I think they kind of post every now and then. Kind of like what we've been doing for the kind last of. year. But we're doing daily vlogs right now. Yes, we are. Monday through Friday. And it's been really good so far. This past yeah. week, it's... Well... It's been interesting, but it's been good. It's been an interesting week, but it's been very good. And it's been like, I don't know. Oh. And there, there's like some mystery because you guys don't know why it's been interesting. And it will all be revealed in due time. Yes. Changes are coming, but things are good. Anyway, so on to the subject of No, I am not pregnant. Yeah, we're not having another oh baby. My don't worry. How I got into IT. The short end of it all is by accident. <laughs> so whenever... Megan and I were dating. I was going to a Votech, um, which is like vocational school, and they had a CAD program, uh, an architectural CAD program. And I was in there, and I did, wasn't really enjoying the, you know, the structure of everything. And I, I don't know, maybe just rebelliousness <laughs> or laziness on my part. But I wanted to do something else. So there was this girl who I was friends with who had mentioned, hey, we have some openings at the graphic design part. And I was really tossing back and forth. Like, I don't even know if I want to do that. And Megan actually had encouraged me to, if you might as well do something until you figure out what it is you want to do. Mm -hmm. Which is funny because I'm that's 10 years later and I still feel the same way. I don't know what I want to do. What do you want to be when you grow up? Happy. That's all I know. And poor. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's so, okay. A lot of people are happy and poor. That's true. Content. Mm -hmm. So we were... So Megan had told me you might as well try to do something while you're waiting and trying to figure it out. And so I went to the, the graphic design school stuff, graduated, did all that cool stuff, got a job in graphic design. It was, it was a cool experience. Definitely a um, stepping... What's that called? Stepping stone. Stepping stone. I almost said stepping tool. I'm like, well, that's not right. A stepping tool. Those are called crutches, Trevor. <laughs> Those are called ladders, Those are Trevor. called ladders. <laughs> um, There's definitely a stepping... God dang it. Stone. A stepping stone stepping for me. Stepping stone. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but while I was working at this news station, I was working nights. And Megan and I had just gotten married. And she was working days, and I was working nights, and we just weren't seeing each other. And it wasn't fun, you know? That's not cool to... Oh, you're with this person. You love being around all the time. Let's not be around each other ever. You know, that's not the way to do things. Mm -hmm. So Megan had said that she wanted me to get another job. And I really, I mean, I wasn't getting paid very much there, but I enjoyed the work I was doing. And so I had told her, if you can find me a job where you're at that will pay me a little bit more and will give me some training, I'll go. And like a couple days later, here she comes. The IT department has an opening and they're looking for like people to start out in IT. And so I kind of just did a shot in the dark. Uh, we knew a few people who worked out there, so... And plus, I think the director I was, loved Megan. I were, oh, did you already say I worked there? No, I didn't say... Well, I, did. I was working there at the time. I don't know, I didn't hear you. But I was working there at the time. The director of IT, yeah, loved me. Mm -hmm. um, and He was a nice guy. He was a nice guy. And I was friends with the IT people because I was not an idiot that they had to deal with all the time. <laughs> that helped. And then um, I, like, called him up. 
like the next day after Trevor was like, okay, if you find me a better job, blah, 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 blah. I was like, oh, look, I found you a better job. Hmm. Did I go out there, though, and, like, I was you supposed to meet, I was supposed to meet with the other director who had, like, right before he left. Yeah. And they, like, were just pulling my chain the whole time. I was there for, like, two or three hours. Yeah, he was a jerk to you. Yeah. Anyway, that was not a good experience. But then I got called up again and said, hey, you want to interview for this job? I interviewed for it. They, I mean, they really did just take a chance on me. I had no IT background whatsoever. So I joined the IT department as just a regular help desk tech. And after three years and like two or three different layoffs, I became like, from IT tech to like supervisor, supervisor almost. tech and then purchasing and all these other things. I inherited all these different roles because it was just needed. And so, your new boss got you certifications. Yep, and my new boss was the one that got me certification. Yeah, I went through like two different... He was a good boss. He was a good boss. Trey, if you're ever listening to this, you were a good boss. Thank you. I've actually had a lot of good bosses. You have. I have not. Yeah, you have not. That's um, why I'm my own boss now. Yep, exactly. So I ended up doing that for a little while. I kind of rose the ranks a little bit. Got paid a little bit more. And then a friend of mine had told me that there was like another startup... Um, going on in the energy sector and I had asked for an interview went in there and met my current boss you have a really great boss right now yeah I have a really great boss right now and, and he's been really really cool he actually recently moved to Houston because he got promoted um, anyway he he ended up taking a chance on me also because I wasn't really your your everyday you know tech god I just kind of know a thing or two and I'm have a willingness to figure things out so I ended up getting a job over here and been here for almost four years. But therein lies the problem. I fell into this career. Mm -hmm. I don't love it. It wasn't a passion of mine. And and my boss is very aware of that as well. Um, not, not through experience, but because him and I have discussions. We're open with each other about that sort of thing. So this is not really something I'm passionate about. I like tech and I like getting into that stuff, but this kind of work is not something I thought I was going to do and something you love. so I think I constantly have an identity crisis because I'm not doing something that I love and I want to do something that I love and I need to figure out what that is if anybody wants to let me know what I should do let me know no I'm <laughs> I, think I have you, no thought process for myself I think that if you had something that didn't take you away from your family all the time mm -hmm. then it would be different yeah you know um but but yes that is how I got into IT the quick gist of it all um, you know, it's one of those things where people say like, oh, I'm in IT, but I do this. You know, this is my, but yeah. this is my passion. And that's the part I'm still trying to figure out. I know online content is my passion, but I don't know how it makes me money right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we can't do that as a job yet. Right now it's just for fun. Right. And, I mean, it, that's the thing too. We don't make any money doing this stuff. We don't make much. We get a little bit. What, a tenth of a penny for each? I'll tell you right now, I've gotten two checks from Google over the past two years, and they've both been $100. <laughs> so, don't for, tell me uh, I don't have a passion. You make $100 a year. $100 a year. Don't tell me I don't have a passion for online content if I'm able to do it for free. I, someone, I don't know, I heard someone say something like, oh, well, whatever, I'm not even going to get into that. Anyways. But, that is my story. Now, Megan gets to speak. Yeah, How did you sure. become... A baby catcher. <laughs> I am not a baby <laughs> catcher. Let's get that straight. Um, so before I was a doula, <clears throat> um, for the record, for anybody who doesn't know what a doula is, a doula is um, basically professional labor support for new families. Um, in a nutshell. Um, but... I, uh, how did I become a doula? Let's see. I could tell the story. I know. I tell it way more romanticized than you do. I you think. do. Before I knew what I wanted to be when I grew up, <laughs> um, I was, I had like random jobs. I was like an admin assistant. I bartended. I waited tables. I taught kids sign language I really I am not a teacher I hated that job so much I did it for like a month <laughs> it wasn't good money either it was I forgot like, you did that Ugh. I was like yeah this isn't gonna work peace out um and kudos to people who can do that though yes I have so much respect for teachers but I, like I'm just not especially then I didn't have kids of my own 
And I'm going to be completely honest, I, I didn't like most kids <laughs> at that point. I didn't know how to play with them. I didn't know how to be around them. So I was like, just do your work and get it over with instead of being creative and making it fun for them. They still learned something somehow. I don't, I mean, they could have learned a whole lot more if I had been <laughs> fun in any way, shape, or form, or turned it into a game or something. But, anyways, I was terrible at it and didn't well, like it. Because, you know, we didn't have much experience with kids other than our nieces, our niece and nephews. I like them. And that's what I'm saying is like, before them, even, like, it was kind of like, oh, kids, cool, whatever. But and then they came along and was like, oh, cool, like, there's this whole love you yeah. don't really realize. I remember telling you actually, like, oh, I love, I love my brother's kids so much. They're so awesome. Yeah. And then we had our own, and I'm like, oh my god, I don't, I didn't even know what that was, you know. It's funny too, because when I was pregnant, uh, we're like going off on oh. the other thing, but when I was pregnant, you said that to me, like, I can't imagine loving our kid more than I love Tyler's kids. Mm -hmm. That pissed me off so bad. I was like, well, because I already loved Lachlan, yeah. you know. And to you, he wasn't really yet. You know, he's not... You didn't know him, and that I understand that. Mm -hmm. But, it, I mean, pregnancy rage. Well, and to clarify, I wasn't saying that... I, didn't, I wasn't saying it's impossible. It's just I couldn't fathom it. Yeah, yeah. You were saying... I can't Which, imagine, I mean, yeah. what, what translates to, I think, to the doula stuff. I mean, that's... I yeah. mean, a big part of that is the mom, but also... That's why you said it's family labor support. It's yes. not just the mom. Uh, around the time I was teaching kids... So, oh, I was also going to college when I got pregnant, before I got pregnant, um, I went to college for two years. Yeah, about. I was like halfway done with finishing. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, <laughs> it's okay, we have no doubt about it. We um, so, I was going to school to be a sign language interpreter. I was actually really good at it too, and I really enjoyed it. And I think that that's something that, I mean, I'm just not passionate about it anymore, but I could have been, but my views just changed. Anyways. I mean, you were a part of that community. I, I and was, you, I and mean, I you still were have a lot of friends yeah. that came from that, and I really enjoyed my time doing it. And I think, I, I was really good at it, and I don't know. Your heart wasn't in it. Yeah, my heart wasn't in it after I had Lachlan. So here's the deal. How I became a doula. I had... A really, really amazing birth. Like, Lachlan, right? With Lachlan. Yeah, well, I had good births with right, right. but But it was my birth, my way, um, and it left me feeling empowered and like I could do this mom thing. Like, I could, I could see having a traumatic birth leaving me feeling like, well, I didn't do that right. How am I going to be a mom, you know? Because oh. being a mom is so much more than... Birth is just, like... That's the easy part. Then you have to raise the things. <laughs> yes, yeah, I've never, I've never really thought of it that way before. Yeah. I usually, I've, you know, you've heard about people who mourn their birth, mourn their was it birth story or birth experience. Yeah. And I never really thought of it that way. That you know they could reason it that way. Yeah, it sets you up for what kind of mother you're gonna be, and how you're gonna feel about yourself as a mother. Hmm. So, um, like, for example, if you made choices during your birth and then you have this cascade of things that go wrong, like, like let's say you get an epidural and it, it causes your baby's heart rate to just drop and the baby's not tolerating it well at all and it doesn't even work for you and now you're feeling all of labor but you have to lay in your bed. Like, the, I think that would be, like, ultimate torture. Knowing that you made the choice to get that epidural that didn't even work and had a negative effect on your baby, you're not going to have confidence in your choices as a mother then. Like, well, I already screwed it up. Yeah. All the more reason to educate yourself. <laughs> I was very empowered by my birth, and I was very um, confident in myself as a mom. Um... And then I talked to a lot of other moms. They had babies around the same time or had they were around my, our age but had already had babies. And they were like, man, I did not feel that way after my birth. It just kind of happened and it was whatever, you know. I mean, it wasn't amazing. I, I guess now I'm, I'm kind of disappointed in it. Like, 
it wasn't what I thought it was going to be, so now I'm disappointed in it. And so then I was talking to my, like, that really struck a, a chord in me that mm -hmm. people could be so disappointed in their birth. So I called my midwife, and I was talking to her about it, and she's like, well, why don't you become a doula? Because I, I told her, I feel like there's something I should do to help women have better outcomes and to feel like they made the best decisions. or Kind of give back. Yeah. How, I feel like there's something I should do. Well, you talked about the empowered thing, so... Yeah. Um, and so, she was like, why don't you become a doula? I was like, oh, that thought never crossed my mind. Because <laughs> you didn't have a doula, right? No, I didn't. And afterwards, I really wished that I had, because at our birth with Lachlan, I had, I had like, four doulas at our birth with Ren. But <laughs> at our birth with Lachlan, we had plenty of people there. But not enough support. Being there doesn't really do much if you don't know how to help. So having somebody there who would have known how to help Trevor, I was fine. I didn't really need much, I don't think. Um, I mean, N Nikki did some counter pressure at one point and it was like the most wonderful thing in the world. But um, I felt really bad for you because it was a long labor with Lachlan and you couldn't go pee, you couldn't eat, like you were not allowed to leave me. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and that was not the case with Ren, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. at all. But I didn't need you in the same capacity, like I had done it before, I knew more this time, you know, I didn't need you in the same capacity. Just like for you, I felt like you could have used a doula, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyways, I, I'm uh... I remember, like, finally getting getting a break. I don't remember who. I think your friend was with you, and you had a few other people with you. You were going through a couple other things, and I think your mom had told me you should go eat. Yeah. I was like, okay, I'll go eat tonight. Was outside eating, and your dad just happened to be there doing something with the car. I'm sure just trying to stay busy. He was not supposed to be there, but he was. There I'm sure he was like. You know, yeah, he was. He, he wasn't in be like close being by nosy. Me. He was. Close by, and he was also trying to be helpful with something going on in the parking lot, or in the driveway. Because driveway. we did home birth both times. Right. And I remember going outside eating my sandwich and your dad talking to me. And I had this moment of just like... <laughs> and I just cried for a little bit. And just like, I, you know, I, I've never seen... I had never seen Megan like that before. And it was just so like... I didn't know. I didn't know what to do. I was just doing the best. I just knew if I could help, in some way. But the thing is, is that it wasn't getting better. So I was helping, but it wasn't getting better. So that's like a stall, for mm -hmm. emotionally. You know, it's like you like to see progress. Mm -hmm. Or at least, I mean, I didn't know. <laughs> it was my own stubbornness. No, but, but, it, but you didn't know that. Yeah, and that's the thing. I'm like, it's all no. I have no experience in this. I remember going outside talking to your dad and just like crying. I was like. I've never seen her like this before, and I hope she's okay, and all this other stuff. And then your friend came out and was like, Trevor, she's calling for you. And I, like, gobbled up my sandwich real quick, like, wiped off my, and I hugged my mom, and I wiped off my tears, and I was like, all right, let's do this. And I went back in there. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That is funny. Anyway. Anyways. What was I saying? Oh, I didn't have a doula, but, um... So yeah, I hadn't ever thought of becoming a doula, and so then I started doing that, and I guess one of, sorry, one of the signs I felt like that I was in the right place, doing the right thing, was that I was at my doula training, and I posted on Facebook like, hey, I'm doing this training, I'm so excited, and in my comments, a girl that I went to school with at OSU uh, was like, Hey, are you're a doula? And I was like, I'm go I'm in a training right now to become a doula and she's like, I'm due like next week. <laughs> and I would really like uh, to have a doula. You did that for free, right? Yeah, it was my first birth. I remember that. I and was so she, nervous for you. Yeah. Um yeah, and so I was like, um sure. <laughs> Let's just jump in with this and so it was like my first time being on call and it was a mess like I didn't know what I was doing but but I, I helped like I, I knew more about everything happening than her and her husband knew but 
you know, not like if they had a baby now and had me as their doula, I'd help them. I'm, I know so much more now. Just You're in a whole other tier education. now. Yeah. Um, but anyways, I just knew that was the right path for me. Um, and so that's how I became a doula. And then after being a doula for about a year, I had attended 16 or 17 births. And I just decided that I could better serve my families that hire me if I became a midwife's assistant. For one thing, because um, hospital birth is without getting way. without getting too in depth about. Well, it's just that it's hospital birth is managed birth. It's like oh, let me check you every hour-ish. And a lot of times families who don't have a doula don't know that they can say no, you know. And that's a big problem with birth it's in a the more United di- States. It's a more disturbed environment. Yes, you're, you're... And at the same time, there's nothing wrong with having your baby in the hospital. If that's where you feel safe to have your baby in the hospital, that's why I come and support you. Sometimes you witness things being done to people when they're clearly saying, no, stop, but the doctor or nurse does it anyways and doesn't stop. Um, And then the first home birth I attended was a friend, and the midwife was doing something, and my client said, I need you to stop. Please stop. And the midwife stopped right away. I have only ever seen that in the hospital like twice mm-hmm. ever um, out of all of those births and it's just like whoa this is this is what care is supposed to be this is how women are supposed to be treated when they're having a baby you're in the most it's uh, such a sacred space to be in and it's one of the most delicate and important things that a woman could ever go through is having a baby. So, the woman should be treated with respect. Yeah. And a lot of times they're not. And so, my answer to that, um, for me to serve my fa- my families that hire me, um, the clients that hire me, um, is to become a midwife's assistant. And the reason why I chose cho- am choosing to do that is because a lot of the things that you can do in the hospital a midwife's assistant can do at home so let's say you are running a a home or a hospital birth um and you hire me a midwife's assistant and a monotrice are very similar a monotrice is like a doula who's trained in um clinical tasks so i'll be able to check your cervical change I can monitor the baby I can uh, not right now I'm not trained in these things yet but I'm working towards it um, I'll be able to check blood pressure heart tones all those things um, and the reason why I'm doing that is for the families that do want to have a hospital birth I can monitor them at home and so especially first-time moms who they first go into labor it happens all the time they get excited and they start freaking out and they're like, oh, I'm in labor, I have to go to the hospital right now. And so we all rush to the hospital and we're in triage. And before we get there, the contractions are five minutes apart, one minute long. They've been that way for an hour, so that's when they tell you to come in. And then we get there and they space out to 15 minutes apart and one minute long. Mm. And because they're relaxed now. Yeah. And they don't hurt as bad now because we're relaxed now. And so, and then the nurse checks you and you're at a one or a two and they send you home. Yeah. So my goal in being a midwife's assistant or a, a monotrice for a family is um, to help you not have to go to the hospital if you don't have to. Because um, they won't admit you until you're at least a four or your water's broken. And also... Like, if, if their plan is to labor at home for as long as possible, then we can do that. We can labor at home till you're at a 7 or an 8 and then go to the hospital. <laughs> and then you can walk in and have a baby. 
instead of laboring at home for a while and like, mm, well, they're this far apart and I kind of have some pressure, so I guess, okay, we'll go in. Oh, I'm only at a five? <laughs> okay, well, at least I can be admitted. And then you're in the hospital with people messing with you the whole time. But that's my goal as a monotrice is, is for one thing, to be able to attend more home births because I do enjoy those more um, because it's people birthing their way more often than not. Um, and so that people who do feel safer in the hospital can hopefully get the birth that they want and have good outcomes at the hospital. So... That's you're amazing. Why? <laughs> Thank you. It is encouraging to me that like you're doing work that you love, and eventually you'll be, you'll definitely have a steady stream of revenue. Yeah. I mean, you're definitely doing well right now, but that'll become more consistent. Hopefully sooner than later. <laughs> yeah, but that's okay. Hope it all makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know in the comments. Did it make sense? <laughs> Do you have more questions now than you did before? Also, while we're talking about birthy things, I'm going to be starting like a birthy podcast on a separate channel um, to, because I, okay, like most doulas to promote their business write blogs. I, we've already discussed, I am not about English, I do <laughs> not like writing, I really enjoy making podcasts, and we're already kind of doing YouTube stuff, so I decided that I'm going to do a podcast to help promote my business and to talk about the things that I'm passionate about. So, we'll let you know when that happens, but... Be um, on the lookout. It's going to happen. It's going to happen hopefully this month. Thank you for listening and watching or liking or disliking or commenting. We would love to have more questions so we could do some more of these. But, yeah, I think that was a good, clear state of how we got into the things yeah. that we're doing. You fell into yours, and I was like... <gasps> you chose yours. Yeah. Well, it, but it took me a long time. Well, at the same time, I think you're... It's one of those things where... It's... Which is encouraging to me. It's like you want... You want to promote the change that you want to see. Yes. So, uh, there's only one way of doing that. You can stand on a soapbox and say stuff all day. Or you can be in it. Yeah. And helping people be educated and help people make informed decisions. Whether that's one direction or the other. At least they're making an informed decision and not going into a blind. Yes. So that's and what I, I think it's really all about. Yes. Having, like, helping people make those decisions and then helping people stand firm knowing that they can continue to make these decisions. Like if, you're, if your idea of a perfect birth is walking in and getting an epidural as soon as you possibly can, that's fine with me. That's your birth. If that's your ideal idea of a perfect birth, all right, let's do it. I'll help you. Make sure that you're changing positions every 30 minutes to an hour so that you continue to progress and you're not just laying on your back. Mm -hmm. You know, that's cool. That's great. If your perfect birth is uh, squatting under a tree in your backyard and having your baby outside, that's cool with me too. As long as you have a midwife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you again for listening. Uh, we really enjoy this kind of thing, so... You'll be seeing more of them soon, hopefully more consistently. Yes. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And be awesome, I guess. This episode was sponsored by Hot Air because the room we're in right now is a little stuffy. <laughs> all That's right. all I got. <laughs> That's all you got. Thanks, guys. We will talk to you the next time we make a podcast. Bye. Bye.